anchor when you get out of the boat, whether you're getting out for five seconds or five minutes. Take it from somebody that sat there and uh, had to swim in the middle of January for their boat. It's not fun. So put your anchor out. Don't be a dumbass. And I tend to oyster barehanded. Um, gloves are for wussies. See, look at that. That's a live one right there. This is what I look for typically. I'll go along. I'll look for one upside down like that right there. That's probably live. See? It's small, but it is a live one. This one right here. That's live. That's actually a double decker. triple there. That in our basket. That's a good one right there, I bet. Yep. Good size. That's probably a live one. Yep, look at that. See that? See people walk over stuff like this thinking that it's dead. And some of it is dead, like <clears throat> that one there, that's dead. Another thing I look for is I'll look for a lip sticking out of the mud like that right there that good oyster see that would look dead to most people but there it is there's a live oyster there you just gotta know what you're looking for basically anything that's two inches or bigger I'm gonna keep it see that's got a lot of little see these are seed oysters and stuff here this little stuff See, you don't want to keep that. I'll just put that back. But see, most people don't have that kind of sense. They'll take all that little stuff home with them. Well, that little stuff never has a chance to grow into bigger stuff. And, you know, that's what happens to the shellfish beds out here. Is, you know, people that don't know how to harvest or don't give a damn, they come out here and they tear it up because they don't know what they're doing. You know, there's signs everywhere that says cull in place and what it means is to, to knock off the dead shells and little seeds and stuff like that but it's a recommendation it's not enforced in South Carolina in North Carolina it is in North Carolina if you have more than uh, one quart of dead shell or seed in your bushel of oysters you dump it out and you get a ticket see South Carolina there's there's no such law people can tote in as much you know dead shell and seed as they want to and the dead shell needs to be left out here so that the uh, you know future crops of oysters can attach to it this right here is a stone crab hole uh, if I was brave enough to stick my hand in there I could probably pull him out but I like my fingers uh, and stone crabs can crush fingers they have enough force they can actually crack clams so I'm not sticking my hand down in a hole with anything that can do that but see that's where he's at he's down in that hole somewhere now, that's a good size one right there look at that turn that over yes sir look at that that's a good one look at here this is a clam Good, uh, that's good chowder size. A little bit big to eat, though. I don't like them that big. Kind of chewy. I've been waiting for this since May 15th. It's, uh, it's closed during the summer. You can't harvest them. So, from May 15th to uh, October 1st. I have to go without oysters. It's something I enjoy eating, but again, it's one of those seasonal things. I do love eating them. I probably eat them three or four times a week, sometimes. And sometimes I'll come out here with my uh, fire pot full of charcoal and actually uh, cook some while I'm out here. Now check this out. Here's a clam sticking right up out of the mud. Right there. That's an old mossy back clam too. Well, there we 
there we go. That basket filled uh, basically up to the handles is about a half a bushel. Uh, the personal limit out here is two bushels per person, so that's four of those. Anyhow, that's about all I ever get, which is a pack, a quarter of a bushel. That's enough to fill a steamer pot up. By the time I fix cornbread or hush puppies, that's a full meal. Yeah. That may look like a pile of muddy rocks to some of y'all, but uh, to us here in South Carolina, that's a delicacy. That's uh, it doesn't get any better than that. Going out here and you know, getting your own oysters and taking them home, washing them up, having your little oyster roast—you can't beat it. Of course, y'all might recognize me from uh, something else. Um, just got to know how to walk in this stuff and uh <laughs> unfortunately for that film crew they didn't anyways uh right back up in that corner over there is where it happened guy that made it happen. Y'all probably recognize this spot right here. Uh, this is where my boat was parked when we did that filming. Now we dance back there and there a bigger, longer, better breed of oyster we go and get some of. It was, uh, it was pretty neat taking those guys back here and, uh, and bogging them down. Well, uh, <laughs> it was pretty fun. Anyway, so it's, uh, it's all in a day's work. All for uh, a handful of muddy rocks. Once the fish stop biting, uh, this is pretty much the only food that you're going to get out of this creek during the dead of winter because the crabs are all buried up in the mud. You're not going to catch any crabs out here. Uh, the fish have all staged and moved offshore. So there's not very many fish in here in the winter. So uh, shellfish is pretty much, uh, you know, what our diet consists of around here in the winter time. That is, you know, and the stuff we have in our freezers. You know, the fish and shrimp that we catch during uh, during the seasons when they're running. But other than that, these muddy rocks here is how uh, it's how a bunch of us survive in the winter time. It's how a bunch of us make our money. Well, here we go. This is uh, what we're left with after the afternoon's labor. They've been washed down with a garden hose, and uh, we've got them in a pot with just enough water to cover the bottom and a spacer in there so that the uh, oysters don't sit there in that water. And basically, we're just you steam cook them for about 20 to 30 minutes until the shells pop open. Yep, and uh, we have a little cornbread to go along with our oysters here, and uh, that's a delicacy around this house. Yesterday I was swimming in the ocean, and uh, tonight I'm burning a fire. We've got we've got oysters on in the uh, on the stove, and the fire in the fireplace. It's a good night here. It's a good Saturday night.